Hi, Alex Williams of the New Stack here today with the Weaveworks team. And today we're going to hear from uh, Peter Borgon. Hey, Peter, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. And uh, Peter is a software engineer with Weaveworks, and he's going to show us Weave Scope, which is a new product from the company, which continues in Weaveworks tradition of making tools that reduce complexity. Scope automatically detects and monitors every host, container, and process in your infrastructure. And it also builds a map of that communication. So, Peter, why don't you give us uh, a tour of what this WeScope's all about? Before diving into the product, I'd like to give a little bit of context. And I guess the thing that motivated us when we were developing Scope was the new context that a lot of developers and tech organizations are working in these days. And that context is one that's built on a lot of new concepts and technologies like Docker, like containers, like microservices. It's a new way of thinking about writing software and deploying software and running software in production. And in this sort of new world, it was our opinion that there are uh, some missing tools that uh, are necessary. What ends up happening is you, you end up uh, piecing together your application from off-the-shelf uh, data services like Elasticsearch or Postgres, Postgres SQL or any number of things, Redis. Uh, you combine that with application services that you've written yourself in-house, uh, and you use maybe um, uh, standard uh, load balancing and, and traffic shaping layers at the top, and you end up with an infrastructure that uh, makes sense when you're building it, but maybe is a little bit tricky to keep track of over time. Mm. And uh, we didn't see that there was a good way to actually get a look at what you've actually built and keep an eye on it as time goes on. So that's the context of scope. We wanted something that you could deploy just like an application service into your infrastructure. And crucially, with no configuration, no declaration, no anything like this, you, we want to be able to show you the infrastructure that you've built, uh, let you explore it, let you, see, let you see the services that you've deployed as they exist, um, click around, and, and uh, be able to monitor the things that you've deployed, your containers, uh, troubleshoot them when they go wrong, and understand them fundamentally. So that's a good, the context that we're working out of. And now I'm going to click full screen again here. Okay, so here we have a very simple uh, deployment of scope. Um, this is the so-called host view, which is showing you the hosts that are part of our infrastructure. And at the moment, we have really only one host, NY Dev, and that's sort of connected to the internet. This is a view that might be familiar to operators and sysadmins. Um, there's many tools that work this way. Uh, Ganglia, uh, Nagios maybe has a host-centric view. And um, you can imagine if we had a much more complicated network, whether it's in a cloud or on bare metal, um, this view would be much more uh, populous. But at the moment, as a demo, we've only got one host. So let's uh, dive a little bit into a little, little bit more detail. And what we can do is click over here on this containers by image. And what this is showing us now is all of the containers that are running in our infrastructure. And what I've done behind the scenes is deploy kind of a, a very typical three-layer stack with uh, some database server sort of at the bottom, uh, a set of application servers in the middle. This is where your business logic would be. And then a load balancing layer at the top, whether that's Nginx or HAProxy, it kind of doesn't matter. Uh, this is a little demo application just to illustrate these, these points. Over here on the side, we have, uh, again, this sort of uh, internet node. We have uh, the scope itself, which is what we're interacting with. And then we have a set of processes that are uncontained that are not in containers. And already here, we can see the layout of our infrastructure. We can see the communication links between the database, the app, and the app and the LB. And if you look at this, if you glance at this, it makes a certain intuitive sense. You know that nothing is misconfigured, right? You know that uh, things are probably the way that they should be. So that's already a, a really helpful. And I'd like to point out that this is information that Scope has gathered from the infrastructure without having to change or instrument any of these applications. Um, if the database was Elasticsearch or Postgres or Redis or anything, if the load balancers are Nginx or HAProxy, if the application service is anything that you write in-house, it's all going to work fine because Scope is looking at the host operating system and making all sorts of intelligent uh, correlations and uh, sniffing and this kind of thing to figure out the, the data communication paths without having to instrument any code. 
So this is a very high level overview. It's, it's, a, it's a great first stop. But what we can do actually is um, go down a little bit lower. And here we see basically the same thing. Uh, we see our, our database server. We see our application server. Uh, we see our load balancers. But here, everything is split up by application name. So we've sort of crossed the barrier from containers into process names. Um, here we see the probe, which is the actual probe of the scope. And um, yeah, so it's sort of another view of the same basic information. We can drill down even further. And now we can look at the containers, not by their container image, for example, the load balancer image, the application server image, the, uh, the database server image, but actually by their instance. So for example, we have a database here and a database here and a database here. These are the three instances of the database that have sort of been split out. This really does look like a graph database, doesn't it? Yeah, precisely. And that's indeed our data model. Uh, we have a very, very granular um, sort of endpoint driven uh, data model where everything that's communicating in your infrastructure is modeled as a node. Mm -hmm. And then all the communication is modeled as edges between nodes or nodes and vertices if you come from a graph, uh, mm -hmm. graph theory background. Mm -hmm. So that's what we detect and that's what we sort of illustrate in our um, sort of very modern web UI. And uh, yeah, so we can see these three database servers here. We can see them talking to the uh, two app servers here. And then above the app servers, we see the load balancers. And if there were communication out to the internet, you would see a link between here and the internet as well. And again, here's our weave scope image. We just have one running at the moment. So you can see very easily, we've gone from uh, a high level overview on it, just uh, on a pure host or like ops basis, down to the containers that are running according to their image name, down to the containers uh, that are running according to their actual container IDs. And we can even go one step lower we can go all the way down to the individual processes on each host, and that's the applications view. And here we have basically the same thing, uh, load balancers, uh, application servers, databases, but now we also see these so-called uncontained processes, uh, the app and the probe, and uh, if I had an SSH connection, you would see an SSH daemon over here, this sort of thing. Anything else that's communicating on the network, uh, we're gonna see in this view as well. So what we can do now is click on one of these guys. Let's click on this app server. And over here we see um, information about this particular, uh, in this case, process. So we see the number of TCP connections that it has open. We see uh, the PID on this host, the process name, uh, some statistics about the host it's running on, including load and operating system. This is really just the bare bones information that we're showing right now. This is something we are going to expand uh, in great detail in the coming weeks and months. Uh, we're going to show things like uh, bandwidth, uh, uh, deep packet inspection for certain applications, this sort of thing. And uh, sort of the, the magic sauce of scope uh, is that all of this information can be semantically sort of combined. So bear in mind, this application server here is one of two application servers. And if we click over here to uh, containers by image, for example, and we click back on the same application server, we see the same information except merged for all of the, uh, all of the instances. So you can imagine if you had 100 application servers and you were in this view, you would see the total number of TCP connections across all of them. You would see each of their origin endpoints and hosts. And uh, when we get to uh, bandwidth, and uh, deep packet inspection, you would see each of their uh, uh, total ingress and egress uh, uh, bandwidth rates. And in this way, uh, you can really drill down and uh, expose problems, uh, see which instances are perhaps misbehaving, perhaps seeing more traffic, this sort of thing. Um, all of this happening without any configuration, any declaration. And that's, that's, sort, of, that's sort of the quick overview. And, uh, I want to emphasize that while we think this is super critical in a production environment, we think it's also very important to be able to run this in a, in a typical uh, developer workflow. So in the build, run, test sort of loop, um, it works equally well in that environment and it helps uh, new developers and uh, old, old hands on your infrastructure to figure out what exactly they're building, how it's interacting, and from a perspective of what's actually happening on uh, the network rather than what you perhaps think is happening or what you expect should be happening. Um, this kind of transparency is uh, very uh, important when you're building software and something that we think is lacking in the current 
uh, in the current ecosystem. So we're really excited to build Scope, take suggestions, and uh, see where it takes us. Well, Peter, thank you very much for uh, taking some time to show us uh, WeaveScope and look forward to hearing more about WeaveWorks and, and where it's taking this service. And best of luck to all of you. Thank you for uh, joining the new stack for this uh, demo.